We are the youngest country in the world. We have 560 million people under the age of 25. If you just take the children of school and high school going age from 10 to 19, we have 225 million of them. Now, what does this mean in practice? Just purely looking at the demographic trends, it means that for the next 30 or 40 years, India could have, and one would argue should have, a youthful, productive, dynamic, working age population at a time when the rest of the world, including China and Europe, the rest of the world is aging. So suddenly, India is poised to become the workhorse of the world, but all of this will only happen if we get one key thing right, and that is education and skill development training. So for us in India, this is not just an education challenge. It is a demographic opportunity. It is not just a demographic opportunity. It is a national security obligation. If we don't get it right, we face disaster. Because if 26% of 1.2 billion people don't know how to read and write, we have the world's largest population of illiterate people as well. In the old days, a kid wasn't in school. It was the parents' fault. Today, if a kid isn't in school, it is the state's fault. And that has created an enormous spur of enrollment. When I went out to graduate school in 1975, I discovered that every single graduate of an IIT was guaranteed a scholarship somewhere in America. Just getting into an IIT showed that your quality was higher than that of the average applicant to an American graduate school. That's the kind of reputation these institutions have. And there is a famous story of the founder of Infosys, Mr. Narayana Murthy, who was asked by an American television channel what his son was going to do, where he'd applied. And he said, well, my son has applied for the IITs, but I'm not sure he'll get in. And the interviewer said, so what do you think he'll do if he doesn't get into an IIT? And Mr. Narayan Murthy said, his safety is Harvard. He'll go to Harvard. And this created some astonishment in America. But the footnote to the story is that a few months after this interview, the son didn't make it to the IITs and got a full fellowship in Harvard. And the reason is, of course, that Harvard takes about 10 or 11% of all applications. The IITs take 0.01% after one of the most rigorous tests imaginable in the country. But I mention this to draw the point that we have quality in the country, and yet it is rare. There are just a few institutions that produce that level of quality, and that once you get beyond them, you will speak to Indian employers who tell you that they are finding that the graduates they are hiring are essentially unfit to be hired. We must have an educational system that can employ people. And that doesn't just mean the IITs and the engineering institutions. It means that those who are not able, capable, or interested in going into those institutions should have a worthwhile available alternative. And that alternative must lie in vocational training. Too much of our education has concentrated on filling the children's heads with facts in order to be able to prepare for and pass an examination. That examination culture is deeply entrenched in India. As I said, I don't know if it applies elsewhere. It may well do. And so we have all this regurgitation and rote learning because the ultimate objective, the measure of a child's worth, has been seen for too long as the marks he or she gets in the examinations.